Welcome to the Only Roofers Podcast. My name's Elizabeth, and I have the pleasure of interviewing Martin Pedigree from Monarch Roofing. Welcome. Did I pronounce your last name properly? Well, we just talk about uh, this a little bit. We, I mess up everything I'm saying, so I'll never <laughs> hold anybody accountable for how they pronounce my name. But it's Martin Pettigrew. Pettigrew. But in French, oh. it's Martin Pettigrew. Hello. Oh. It doesn't. It okay. doesn't matter. I won't even. <laughs> I won't even try that one. So today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about your idea behind your last book. Actually, what made you sit down, get a pen, paper, laptop, and actually start your book? Uh, it's a great question. It's a great question. Um, we said we're obsessed with our customer. So we're trying to build everything around that mindset for Monarch Roofing and then uh, find ways to, to give back to, to a great community. You know, roofing industry does not have to be so difficult. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot of new companies uh, that are going into the industry, but they don't last. And that's a terrible statistic. Mm -hmm. uh, we pride ourselves to take the con out of contractor. So I said, what can I do to really uh, stop talking about it and mm -hmm. do something about it? So we decided to, to write the book and share what's been working for us, a revolution at Monarch Roofing in the last three years, how we went from 17 to 25 to $40 million in sales through this roofing machine mindset with improving all the recruiting, training, and through the positioning of the uh, employees and revolutionize our industry, so so, our business anyways. One thing that happens is people don't just become an obsessive type personality to be able to, we're obsessed with customer service, right? With our customer, with clients. So where did your obsession first start, right? What's the first thing you ever got obsessed about? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I'm obsessed now. And it's, this is great. No, okay, so, I want the first one. Okay, well, first one, first one, first one. Uh, Could have been when you were a kid, <laughs> in school, what was it? Okay, so I, that's what popped in my head, okay? So I'll tell you, uh, I remember when I was seven or eight years old, I was uh, playing baseball and they had like the little cards, which makes no sense, okay? <laughs> you know, like you can sell something, you have a win-win situation. Yeah. This was a win for me only situation, <laughs> okay? So we had to raise money for a baseball team and they had these little cards uh, that they had little squares. It's probably like, let's say 50 squares. And you, got, you had to get the homeowner or somebody to scratch off and they would give you money for what they scratch off. So it sounds like, hey, I'm gonna scratch off and win something, but everybody lost. They would yeah. all give me money. So when you scratch it's off- a French thing? I, I don't know. <laughs> I never seen that again. That was the only time. So that was my first time of, I guess, uh, selling or doing something that was uh, out of ordinary. Uh, but it, it was cool because it created like a, a different mindset because I really, it was raising money for my team and also get baseball hats. Mm -hmm. So the more you sold, the more baseball hat you would get. Uh, and we didn't, I was not poor, but we didn't have much money uh, at all. So that meant so much to me because I never had a nice baseball hat. Yeah. So I'm like, wow, I can get so many baseball hats. If I sell five cards, I can get 50 hats. Wow. So I got uh, I got creative, go door to door, which I never thought, like people say, I don't do door to door. I'm like, oh no, I was doing door to door when I was eight years old. Yeah. And going in malls and waiting for people to go through the mall so I could stop them. Uh, I got that was kicked my out a few times. Sales yeah, job. no way. So to stop them and, and so I can ask them to scratch off. And the best, you want to hear what my best strategy was? Yes, I would love terrible. to hear. Okay, maybe door to door, I don't know if that works, but <laughs> since we're DDD, I would kind of insult them. <laughs> I learned that from Tom, okay? So it was a lady coming in, I said, hey, mister, can I? And he was like, what? It would get their attention right away. So uh, I would say what they were not, and it yeah. worked every time. And yeah. you can't say no to a kid that's yeah. trying to, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, if it's a missus, oh, mister, yeah, I get it, yeah. I get it. Mine was, I would look at the person, I would profile them, I'd be like, oh, you're from whatever XYZ country. So I would try to guess their country as they're walking by, and all, most of the time you get rejected. Like, yeah. I, I would get rejected, because I'm just over here trying to sell stuff, but. So once you developed that, okay, I can be obsessed about something and I can win. Before Monarch Roofing, what was the first big win you had in between the baseball cards and Monarch Roofing? Uh, golf, golf uh, was really why I'm here. Really got lucky. Golf? Uh, you know, just listening to Jesse Itzler, like uh, it was a very emotional speech. So like uh, it reminds me of uh, our times. He mentioned something about, about, about his kid and reminded me of me a little bit. Uh, so I played golf. I was 12 years old. I was I was really good, but I just started, yeah. and it was an opportunity to play golf. Um, to uh, it's a state school, and I won't bore you all the details. But it was only school during the morning. We play golf every afternoon, and the opportunity to play golf in the United States a month a year. So I really oh, wow. wanted to play in that team. Uh, so I went and, and qualified. But what I found out after is I was the last kid picked out of 22 kids. I was the 22nd one. So. 
that changed who I am now because I would not be here if I didn't get picked last uh, to be on that team, to move away when I was 13 years old, to move uh, to play golf and got a scholarship to play golf in, at St. Francis University. Uh, NCAA Division One was my dream and then moved to Myrtle Beach and started this roofing company. So it's all little thing that, um, you know, sometimes don't realize, but jump on the opportunity. Don't be, you talk about this, you know, you went to see AT yesterday behind the scene. Oh my God, you blew my mind. But, you know, we're all courageous. We just are compliant with rules um, and things that we do. Imaginary so. rules. Um, I love to hear this story because it's so interesting, right? I didn't want us to have a podcast that's like everything else out there. I love hearing the story. Think about that feeling you had as being picked 22nd, right? How does that translate? How does that inspire you today? Or is that just something you had like completely almost unappreciated up until now that you get this brought up? Like how close do you hold that to your heart and your success currently? Yeah, waste no pains. Don't waste no pain. So every time an opportunity to hear something or a challenge, I take it deeply uh, to myself. But right now, one that can't, I can't get over or never end, you know, because people say like, oh, you should have a goal. Your goal is, let's say, I want to do one million in sale this year. Well, when you get to a million, do you stop or what yeah, happens? Exactly. So I don't want to do that. I'm like, but since I'm an immigrant, you know, I got an opportunity to be here in this awesome country. I love America. Uh, my wife always speaks on me. She's like, you're the most American Canadian in the world. <laughs> like, you're so committed. So um, I feel like I have a duty to give back to our community, to everybody I touch, to be very intentional with my activities, uh, to do something special here because I feel like I owe everybody that's been here before. I have, uh, we have a lot of veterans that work with us. And when they tell me stories about war, um, it, it, it blows my mind. And what I can do, I'm not doing much, but what I can do, I'll do everything I can to make a difference. How is your day-to-day -day interactions with your employees? Because you have a pretty big team now. Um, I'm sure you don't get to spend as much time with them as you'd like. How do you still keep that closeness, closeness with them and still get to hear their stories and everything? Great question. So four years ago, we started two other locations, Hilton Head and Wilmington, and we're in Myrtle Beach, of course. And then um, when we started this, I was really on the day-to-day -day activity in Hilton Head. So it took me two years to get out of it. So I could finally work on the business for about six months, and then it failed. So I had to go back to Hilton Head. Myrtle Beach was stable, Wilmington was stable. Uh, so I've been working really hard closely with the entire team, every day, every morning, all day. And I took a pledge to not do anything activity with like uh, homeowners unless I had somebody with me so I can teach somebody whatever I can from my activities. Uh, but since December 7, right before the roofing process, I have a general manager fall through the location again. So I'm not really in a day-to-day -day for Monarch Roofing as much. I'm mostly on a day-to-day -day with Riva, the coaching company. So that's where I spend my most of my time, and it's seven people. So uh, we meet every day close wow. together. And, and uh, You're building your next dream. So how did you find your next dream, right? Was it through past experiences? Was it something you've always dreamed of? How did you find this next dream that you're after now? I think everybody falls into it a little bit, but with time it comes clear. So we are passionate about our customers who say you deserve the best. Obsessed. Uh, <laughs> obsessed with our customer. So again, talk is cheap. I'm like, okay, we, it's really hard to, we're going to go do a franchise. We started this, the process almost three years ago. Uh, but then we decided after the three location, like there's got to be a better way to do this, uh, to impact more people. I think the impact comes in from helping roofing contractors become more successful. So the coaching was more attractive to me to spread the word how to do business better instead of being selfish and being me to want to do more for uh, my business. So I think that's going to be a different avenue and I'm really like the roofing machine and our process, we have an online portal. So it's all the process and procedure of Monarch Roofing and how we do everything really. So it's almost cheating. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about when you came to America, right? I'm sure that you were thinking, what what on earth made you decide, I'm going to start a roofing company, I'm going to go be a roofer? Like, why? Why a roofing? Okay, perfect. Awesome. Great question. I was, uh, I moved to Myrtle Beach, a dream of golf. So I was playing a lot of golf. Yeah. But I was making six ninety an hour, Elizabeth, <laughs> at the pro shop. Yeah, and I was parking. Yeah, nothing. It, nothing. It was terrible. I couldn't, I couldn't make my, pay my bills. Sorry, I wasn't laughing. Like, oh, I was, no, I it was terrible. laughing as in like, yeah. I get it. I've been there too. I have made $5 an hour before or less. Yeah, yeah. I'll make, yeah you can do it. It's, it's terrible. So I start working at night. So I start parking cars at night at, at a club. And then I would see these guys coming in. You with, as a family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for years, for years. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. Uh, great way to make money. So if you focus on money, I would probably still be there. Um, and then I was parking cars. The guys had like nice F-250 diesel. They had Hummers. They had so they were living the dream, really. Mm -hmm. They would 
stay up all night to party and then they had a lot of money I'm like yeah. okay who are these guys what are they doing like I'm so obsessed I'm like I can't be barely pay my rent so they walk on tractors wow so I'm like okay you guys are 26 27 28 you're crushing it and so I started asking questions like how do you it's 2007 how do you get up in the morning if you're here to two three in the morning and no I don't know too much about roofing or construction but you got to sun up to sun down so they said, we don't care if we get up in the morning or we get fired from a job or if we lose it because there's so much demand right now that wow. we'll get another job. Like, wow, this is wrong. Yeah. That's, that infuriated me. I said, I got to take the con out of contractor. That mindset came yeah. from there. So I'm like, I became a crusader for average roofers. So how did you even get into training? Because when I got into the industry in 2015, there was no training. Right, and then my first experience with money was I was a waitress on uh, in a yacht club in the beach in Key Largo, and people would come and tip me a hundred dollars on a beer just because they know. And I'm like, you're giving me a hundred dollars. All I did was bring you a beer. So that was what turned me on to money. But then I found my sales job in roofing. So how did you go from parking the cars to deciding now Crusader for average roofer? What was it? Where did you train? Where did you even train? That's a great question. I, I didn't. I really learn by mistakes and it's the wrong way you know that's why I believe like it doesn't have to be this hard you know I made it really hard on myself to learn because I didn't really have any avenue I listened to people that surrounded me in my area but nobody's really giving you right information in your territory your Correct. competition they give you something it sounds good but yeah. it's not pure yeah. so uh, 2013 I came to youth actually first time I came here for the wealth builder with GAF as a yeah. master elite contractor I was a week or two weeks in as a master elite and it changed my mind my whole concept uh, met Craig Willick he's a uh, best roofing very in... very he's amazing he's uh, based out of South Florida yes yeah. you know him Greg so, Wallach he's yeah, Wallach, amazing so. he did uh, half of South Florida's condos flat roofing system they sponsor our highways yes 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 but he doesn't know how much he impacted me because I never I got to call him back about this but yeah. Yeah, he gave me 30 minutes and uh, well first of all I saw him at South Lake and then the the book uh, good to great i read this and he got good so to many... great is one of my favorite yes. books ever <laughs> it is wow that is my favorite that's actually my most impactful book good to great awesome yeah it impacted me so much and his uh good heart you know it, how his story with his cool boss and how mm -hmm. he got kids and how he gives back to the community and like i want to be like this really yeah. very influential so a few years later, he gave me 30 minutes on the phone, and that's where we started doing the, the training and hire a recruiter and hire a trainer. He was the, the mind opener for that. So surround yourself with people that are not in the industry or on industry, but not in your market. Yeah. Coming to D2D, going to roofing process or IRE week next, next week, I think. Best so. roofing, if you guys, if anyone's watching this video and you want to Google them, they are beasts. They are the, uh, like um, Monarch is amazing as well, but Best Roofing is like they they are a league of their own. I just I'm always I look at everything they do and I'm always so impressed as well. And I literally they sponsor our highways, yeah, so it's it's a great person to learn from. And you never know who you're impacting either. So that's almost your responsibility next too, right? You never know what guy you just met in the hallway here, who you're gonna help change their life too because that's really what it's all about at the end of the day is uh, building momentum by impacting others, right? So now you've gone from this. golf, from Monarch to Riva. Do you feel like there's something, like a set goal that you have to reach your potential where you'll feel good or it's just endless? What is your mindset? Uh, it's The duty is endless for sure. I'm comfortable where I am. You know, I get personal goals all year and personal growth that's very uh, important to me. My family, of course, very, very important. So, uh, but. Riva, we're thinking about 50 states. How can we impact 50 states? So it never really ends. You know, I want to impact as many people as possible. So. Do you guys have a slogan? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. No, well, we, we need do. a slogan. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I got I got one name this morning. Yeah. I got named T.J. Uh, McCormick. Yeah. Uh, the world's greatest roofer. That's my friend. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So he said uh, I should name myself the Roofing Machine. So I got yeah. that. So that's it. The Roofing Machine. Yeah. That's there a new name. Yeah. <laughs> so it's official now. On only roofers morning. first. The Roofing Machine. I love that. That's that is actually a great name for your slogans and everything. So that's amazing. What is your last tip to someone who's watching this video? Right. You've overcame being an immigrant, uh, learning an industry, learning how to make money, learning how to be successful. How, 
what, what did you have to overcome? What was that mental challenge that maybe someone else may be having that you can give them some advice to help them work through it? Okay, so I wish it would have happened before, but really when we went from six million to 13 million, uh, I really put personal growth at first, even though I started by personal growth of myself, but my team. So really unselfishly giving everything to key members of the team and really want them to become better than me profoundly. Uh, by doing this, it, it changed everything. The, really, people are they're better than me, but when I'm teaching, helping people, I'm actually learning more because I got to study my, when I'm going to be preparing for the next day, I got to study it, so I master it. So there's something special, share the information, be pure, be intentional, but it's got to come from, from the God. And one more thing, if you don't mind. Yes, so, go ahead. <laughs> I said, uh, um, uh, we all built to survive, not to grow. Um, you know, we're all courageous, don't be afraid to do something different don't comply okay the rules are meant to be broken or bent so i really like what your mindset is so uh, uh, that's what i would say yeah so yes my mindset is there are no rules really honestly and i would say that for you there are no rules uh, as long as you're ethical you're moral and you're doing good there are no rules on how you should do things and there's literally nothing stopping between you and your next phase of life and that's the same thing i have to say to everyone out there the only rules and limitations are the ones we place on us and the mental blocks that we we put up so thank you guys so much thank you this was amazing thank you for sharing the roofing machine <laughs> thank you guys for watching another episode of the only roofers podcast and stay tuned for the next one